Um, well, it, well, first of all, the space is beautiful. Um, I feel very fortunate to be able to work in a space like this. Um, also, if you'll notice above the door, it says Wilbur A. Crockett Library. Um, it's named after this legendary English teacher. Um, I do know that he taught Sylvia Plath. Um, I don't know much else about him, actually. Um, and there's also over there, there's a picture um, on the wall, and that is actually a picture of Sylvia Plath sitting with Wilbur A. Crockett. Very cool. Um, and I guess he instilled uh, sort of a love of learning and uh, inquiry in his students, so it seems pretty appropriate that they would have named the library after him. Okay, so we have a display window here, and so every month or every couple of weeks we try to change it up with different activities, and currently we're running a March Madness for books, and so students can come and vote but it's like a head-to-head -head between two different titles, and then at the very end, it will be two, two titles remaining. Um, so it's just a fun way to try to get people to be interested in more titles and books and, and still love reading. And tell us what their favorites are. Right? Yeah. So we started with the, the 16 most popular books. And what are some of the titles of the most popular books these days? Um, well, so far, The Hate You Give, um, 39 to 15. So that's a pretty popular book. Um, and then we they're have, all popular. Um, we have Hey Kiddo, which is uh, written by a local author, Massachusetts author, Jared Koshashka. Um, so that one won last week's um, Head to Head. So we are here behind the Check Out Your Book section. So tell us about this section. Um, well, students come here. This is sort of the first spot where they can come get help, um, which is why we're right at the front door. Um, and you can check out books here and actually Right over there is what's known as our quick print station. So it's almost like Kinko's, but for teenagers. So they can, there's a scanner there, there's um, printers and um, computers where you can log in and just print something from Google Docs. And there's also a photocopier. So the, this area gets used quite a bit because kids will come down all day long to print things. Yeah, we're looking into having a self-checkout. We would love to have it. It's just um, we need to figure out a way to do it so that the students can use the catalog but not give away any kind of confidential information. So it's really sort of a confidentiality reason why we don't have one yet. We are more than just books. Um, recently we actually created these project kits because kids are always coming in doing projects and sometimes they are missing a roll of tape or missing some scissors. So we actually created these project kits for kids to check out. Um, coming up, hopefully, we've um, written a grant to um, acquire more maker material. So the hope is that we will have even more maker type material in library um, starting from next year. Um, so sometimes we do host events here, um, and we'd actually like to start doing that more and more. Um, recently we hosted a coffee house um, for the, there's a LGBTQ plus club called GLOW, which stands for gay, lesbian, or whatever. Um, and they have an annual coffee house, and it's always been in the cafeteria. And um, we sort of approached them thinking that this would be a much nicer environment, um, plus we have really good acoustics. So it ended up being just kind of a beautiful evening. Um, there was... You know, lots of talent and lots of creativity and lots of enthusiasm, um, and everybody had a good time. Well, I just, I actually find the names that are up there fairly inspiring, because um, there's a huge amount of sort of diversity of, you know, discipline and background or even um, century that these people were, you know, doing great things. Um, so I, I just like coming into a space and being able to see that every day. So we do have these placards that are on the tops of the shelves that describe what each of these people did. did. Exactly. But they do ask us. Yes. Yeah, they definitely do. Yes. Um, if they can't figure something out or they're not sure, yeah. they'll talk to us about it. So you ladies have all these names memorized, right? <laughs> well, not memorized, but we do know who they are. Yes, and everything that they've done. <laughs> yeah. At a drop of a hat. Uh, sort of, sort of. <laughs> yeah. We're talking about the Raiders Diversity Reading Challenge, so tell us about that. Okay, so this year we have two very fabulous library assistants who came up with the, an idea to promote um, leisure reading here at the high school. Um, so what we, dis, we, what we are doing is the Raiders Diversity Reading Challenge. It's basically challenging everyone to read outside of their normal genre. So if you look at the bingo board, because it's, it's ultimately it's a bingo game, um, there is a different genre or type of book that e each person should read and once you get a bingo you can come and collect a prize. And you're very high tech, you have a QR code embedded in there as we well. have a QR code, yes, because um, the center square is recommend a book. So when, when a child, a, a student recommends a book, we actually put up the book covers over there on the window. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, what's banned book? 
What does oh, that well, for? sometimes it sort of throughout history, but it's an ongoing problem. Um, sometimes, um, usually starts out as a challenge. Somebody decides that there's a book that might be inappropriate um, for a school setting and will ask for that book to be reconsidered. Um, and sometimes it's flat out banned. Um, that I don't believe anything's been banned here in Wellesley. Um, but every once in a while, somebody, you know, sort of has a challenge throughout the country with things that are on the shelves. So tell us about the rooms and how students check them out. So we have a very low-tech way of checking out rooms. Um, we just have this clipboard that students can come in and put their names on for certain blocks, and that's, that's how you check out the rooms. Um, and in terms of the displays, I mean, we are constantly rotating our displays. So because we had the primaries recently, we have voting information for students. Um, and just every couple of weeks, we change the displays. You'll notice that there's a display further down. It's all the new titles that just came into the library. Yeah. And then um, students who are over 18 can come here and vote. And then do they mail this in or do they leave it with you? Um, well, I believe they would actually have to register the vote first. Yeah. Um, so I, I suppose they could use this as, as an absentee ballot, but I think it's more just to kind of get a ballot in front of students and get them thinking about voting. civic responsibility and voting, because um, that's always it's a huge part of our democracy. So we are in the 1938 room, and I hear this is quite a famous room. It, well, <laughs> I guess it's a famous room. Um, it's sort of like a time capsule to the old school, which was built in 1938. So around the walls, um, you will see uh, we've got paintings of the old school. Over in the far corner, we have the original cornerstone from the 1938 building, some plaques. Um, what else do we have? Cabinetry, um, some of the exterior lights from the old school. Um, and this, school, this room is used primarily as our main classroom when we teach uh, library research lessons things like that. And when it's not being used as a classroom, it becomes a quiet room. Um, so at the moment, we're actually <laughs> being not very quiet in the quiet room. But we're doing the thing that I always tell the kids not to do. But Today's an exception. Today's an exception. But it's the kids really like this room because it has a very warm vibe to it. Um, and, you know, it's historic, too. So, so it's interesting. I, I know a little tidbit about this room. Um, the floors in this room were the floors in the old library, in the old building, I believe and they repurposed them and put them into this room. Yeah, they, def so. they definitely came out of an older building. Right. I'm not exactly sure which one. Right. And um, so I think Jamie Chisholm told us, Jamie Chisholm is the principal of Wellesley High School, and I think he told us he was an English teacher at the yes, old high was. school before. So I think he had mentioned at some point that these are the original floors from the old school. I'm oh, not cool. sure where in the old school. Yeah, but, I'm not sure either. But I, I like the architectural um, panels on the wall. Yeah. Do you know if those are for the new building or for the old building? I think those are the original schematics for the old building, or some of those schematics anyway. Oh, interesting. Yeah. The, the sconces on the walls as well right. are from the old building. Yeah. And you'll notice some of the sc sconces downstairs outside right. on the exterior of the building Same are from the, old, from the old building. Yeah. And what is that little interesting um, cabinet that's... Well, I believe the, the original library in the old school building um, was uh, maybe on the second or third floor. Mm -hmm. Um, and at one point they outgrew that because they started to outgrow the school anyway and they, they added on another library. So those, the original library room ended up being classrooms. So some of that cabinetry I think is from the original library and ended up in somebody's classroom, possibly Dr. Chisholm's. So. Yeah. That looks like an old uh, card catalog, Dewey catalog it system. Right? It really does. Yeah. Um, it could be that that's what it was. Right. So behind me is what the, the kids call the QSR. It stands for the Quiet Study Room because we realized um, because the library is open all day, every day for the students to come in and do work and also to work collaboratively, you'll notice it's not a silent, super quiet space. Um, so we decided to carve out a few spaces that were quiet in case somebody needs to sort of isolate and, you know, get their AP U.S. history work done or whatever. Um, it's always AP U.S. history. Um, that's yeah, the, that's the it, it's always AP something that sends people into a complete right, panic yes. um so that's one of those things that and also f kids when they go in there their friends see they're going in there and realize like okay you know joey's got to get something done i'm going to leave him alone right Time now to be serious so um how but, long can they have the rooms for uh, uh, well that one that one they just go in right. um they, they don't have to rent it out hours. yeah if they could be there all day if they like wanted to time. well they'd have to go to class but right. um the other rooms that we have where they can rent out as a group um Usually, if somebody gets it for more than two hours, we have a conversation with them because that seems like yeah. unnecessary. Yeah, exactly.
<laughs> so and, uh, is there is there a distinction like you can check it out as, as an individual space or as a group space? Are there designated rooms? Um, well, if it's just an individual, we encourage them to use the room behind me because okay. um, that's more sort of a room for people who are working individually. Um, and the study rooms that they can rent out, can, they can have up to six students, and it's got a whiteboard, so if they need to use something where they can all work right. together. Um, the, the library is like the crossroads of the school. Yeah. So all disciplines meet here, all grades meet here. Um, so we get to build relationships. Yeah, and we see them for four years. So a lot of times a classroom teacher only sees a kid for one year, which is great because they get to know them in depth, but we get to see everybody for four years and that's nice. So. I, I would have to agree that it, it, it really is the kids and building the relationships with the kids. And a lot of what I, I hope libraries um, could be is just providing help to the people who use the library. So if you're looking for a quiet space, if you're looking for a place to study, if you're looking for a place to hang out with your friends and just take a chill time, downtime from your academic classes, I feel like the, the library can serve all those different purposes. So it's not just about books and academics, it's, it's also a place where you can just take a, take a breath. And it's also a place actually where teachers do that. So sometimes a teacher will wander in and find a cushy chair in the corner and just sort of sink in and not have to, you know, provide extra help for an hour. So right. it's kind of nice for them to be able to escape. And so do you think that kids um, generally come in here more for uh, research work help or class help or just to get some quiet time? What do you think on average, like? It's a mixed bag. Yeah. I, I think different yeah. people come in for different reasons, but I, I really think that it's valuable to have the space available for many of those reasons. Yeah, I think it's flexible enough that you can kind of get a lot of things done here that you need to get done. Um, and you know, if you're bored and just want to read a book, you can sit down and do that too. So, so we're here with Wellesley Media and we have some very um, interesting Wellesley High School students who are going to tell us about how much they love this library. Lucy? Um, Yes, uh, I love this library. It's a really good place to come and do homework when you have a free in school. So who's your um, favorite name on the wall? Um, probably Washington. Why? Um, I just like George Washington a lot, I guess. I don't know. That's, that's, that's a good person to like, <laughs> founding the country and all. Right? Yeah. Yes. How about you, Ms. Mary? Um, I like coming to the library because it's also really quiet and easy to get work done and you get to collaborate with your friends, which is nice. And I think I like Franklin because I think Ben Franklin is a really influential person whose work is overlooked. And how often are you in here per week? Probably at least once a day. And how about you, James? Uh, I like the library because there's a lot of different rooms that you can work in. It's definitely more comfortable than a classroom, I feel like. Yeah. And it's quiet, so you can get your work done well. So, so who's your favorite person on the wall? Um, I like Gandhi the best because I think he was a really inspirational person and he didn't use violence but he just, he led a lot of people and he was very um, inspirational in his work. So. Good answer, your parents are going to love that one. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. You.